the Around the NFL podcast is absolutely certain your team will nail free agency. From the Chris Wessling podcast studio, it's Around the NFL. I am Dan Hansis. I have heroes here. I do. Greg Rosenthal and Mark Sessler. Free agency is around the corner. Boys, the Greg Rosenthal top 101 Mm -hmm. conversation on this show today, live on NFL.com Monday. And I've been thinking, Mark, I did some real thought about this. Exciting. So we're doing our competing. And I just want to make it clear. This is not about one upsmanship of you, Greg. It's not. None of this is personal. This is just business. You know what I mean? Competing would indicate <laughs> it's a little. I don't know. <laughs> there are elements personal, of it being, but the, the point of a competition is to there. win, not to lose. Yeah, right. But it's business. You ever hear that term? It's business, yeah. not personal. It's a bit. This is business. <laughs> um. So this is what I'm thinking, Mark. Okay. Greg has a 101. He's got 101 blurbs. We wanted to go bigger, and at one point, I asked uh, Big Funk behind the glass to contact the union and find out how many free agents they were. Maybe we'll do them all. That seems, even for us and what our ambitions are, a little bit over the top. So then I was checking out the PFF, which is a widely respected um, analytics-based football website, uh, if you're not aware. Um, They put out a free agency 200. Ooh. Okay. So now we have a baseline to work off. Now, I would say, should we do a free agency 201? Mm. But no, because what I want, and tell me if you agree, because okay. this is our joint project. Yes. I want people to say that, oh, wow, Dan and Mark did well over uh, 100 more than Greg. And then I thought, what would, what would be well over 100? And I came down to the number 213. Okay. So Total. The, the free agency 213. Okay. And then I was thinking, we got to blurb them all out. Because like PFF did 150 blurbs. Greg's only going to go to 101. Did you, did you do 101 blurbs? We actually do m- much more because you end up using off, like right? 120 people. Right. So it's probably about one. But what lives on the side is 101. We AI that bitch. And then we get, <laughs> so we get all that. And then what we do is we then go in, let's say in the top 50. And we just, little, uh, little hands this like pop culture interjected in a little, little color little uh zuzzler humor sure and then Sess dog with his sesslerisms and some of it, some of it's his like, like in the deep dark night marcus <laughs> davenport you know right we and mostly See, in the greg's, top 50. greg's on edge about this. yeah he yeah. sees this as a good plan out. <laughs> that i put thought into it so you put some sesslerism and some some you know turns of phrase in there in the top 50 because most people stop reading after that <laughs> Then last step, and this is the most important. Do mm-hmm. we do we preempt Greg? We get it out before Monday? Yeah. No. Do we put it out right after Greg? No. We do the Mayock move. Remember Mayock? Everyone's like, oh, mock 74. He did one mock draft. It was like the day before the draft. We put out one. We drop it a couple days before free agency, the legal tampering period, and that becomes what everyone's truly waiting for. What do you think? I think, I, first of all, I appreciate the fact that I had not even thought about this list in the interim between our last show, but you have put a lot of thought into it. Quite a bit. Um, I, have, I can tell you up from proof, I've been AIing articles since roughly <laughs> 2021, and uh, it's got, the technology's gotten better, so I think it won't be hard for us to right. layer in some of our own little spice and jazz, yep. and no one will know, except for the Mostly in the top 50. Yeah, then well, you, know, yeah. you get down to the little one sent. Greg gets to the one sentence blurbs when you get real low. Oh sure. Uh, and then one of the things I like about this plan because you guys are so passionate about it, and so you you would obviously <laughs> know you. this that with all the cuts, yes, and all the last minute signings, mm-hmm. that list is changing more than Always ever moving. right up until Always the end. So. That last four or five days of you, like you can make your list now, but you're going to be working feverishly, keeping up with all the transactions and signings and, and things added to the list and changing around and really meeting together quite a bit in those final 48 hours. <laughs> I, I actually am kind of glad I'm getting mine done out of the way now. Cause that, I see you know, what you're that, doing. that would only, you know, require someone who has really loves the game because I'm in deep right now. Uh, you're trying to get Shex, shake Sessler out of the project. I could tell. It's a convincing <laughs> effort by Greg. But, but I don't think he understands the powers of AI. 
and how much we'll lean into right. that to be tracking all of this right. on our behalf. We've got, you know, you didn't think about yeah. that, Greg. It's like, High oh, technology on Sky, our should I put him ahead of Tier Tart or, or not? Like, that's wakey. You know, someone's calling you at 11 p.m. from the news desk. Or actually, do you have a method to actually produce this anywhere? Or he thinks how this the be? lady yeah, doth it? protest too much. I do, th I do think there could be some fair questions about, like, tangibly getting approval to have this on our website. You Except just, that we've been writing this slip, website for 15 please. years. Like, come on. You, you, you slip Ali Bumpuri a $20 bill, it'll do anything. It on. Actually, I think, it they, I think they would take some extra content. It could be like Mock Draft Central competing. In fact, my biggest concern really is that if we turn this in, they're going to ask us to be writing again, which that's, that's a concern as well. So these are all things to think about here in the offseason in a project that could really make or break our careers. Yeah, I think we've got we've to tread carefully. Um, what a show. <laughs> it was great. Great having everybody here. This is the uh, Thursday edition of Around the NFL uh, behind the glass today, by the way, uh, sitting in for the great Eric Roberts, who is with his uh, lovely wife, and they're they're doing they're on that wonderful journey towards their first child landing on Earth, um, and they have an appointment of some kind. What do they call it? Sonogram. Yeah, sonogram. Big funk behind the glass today. Mm. Big funk. Mm, in a big chair. Big funk. Big chair. He ain't scared. What's up, bud? <laughs> What's happening, guys? Could have went for another hour, but. Dang. Damn, that, that, that hits funk, hard. Big funk at the best uh, <laughs> intro music. Mark, How are you? still waiting for our intro music. <laughs> Randy Chavez. What's happening? <laughs> Big funk. <laughs> Big funk. Our, our, our podcast was now just a hangout podcast. We were just like, hey, what's going on? How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. How about you guys? This is interesting. This feels uh, feels different. It's new. You're in, like a, you're a, in control. A, a rush of power yeah. suddenly yeah. to be sitting in that seat. Yeah. How does it feel <laughs> to be... Uh, potentially have a, a power play opportunity of your own with Eric out, out of the studio. I mean, it's, it's tempting to abuse it, right? I mean, <laughs> power corrupts all, doesn't it? But uh, I think I should be okay. And I believe you have, and this is a great, speaking of power plays, <laughs> I think you have something for a member of the show that you wanted to oh, share. Oh, that's right, yes. I do. Yes. Um, okay, I see, Cynthia, do you want to bring in? It's on the chair. It's a special. The great Cynthia, who does incredible for, uh, work on our show. Oh, Sesco. What is this? Oh, what? Oh, my wow, wow, goodness. Wow. Thank you, Cynthia. And <laughs> what is it, Mark? Explain <laughs> well, I mean, this is this is actually quite uh, weak changing because I got my unsoiled uh, Super Bowl program, which you remember was on my desk. It was soiled. Ripped yes. Someone open. had touched it. Yep. And uh, this is the ticket in case Open it, it up. Last. Let's say, sure. I mean, show the Let's audience on like. YouTube. There's nothing in it. Uh, hold it up. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, well, you, you can take the little. You got to take yeah. the film off, but we could well, do that later. We'll do People that later. get I mean, the idea. I want to keep it pristine well, that, and pure. How about that? What a what yeah. a move by Randy. That's great. Um, thank you very much. Anytime, I don't know. How, how do you feel, how you, Mark? You feel? I feel like now, first of all, whole. I think I learned the lesson is like complain about more things, um, and then results start to happen. It, it's true. <laughs> There's that, but I have to say one thing about our company. And right now, you know, we're in this building where uh, you know half the place is leaking. You've got. Uh -huh. All the outdoor shrubbery under the temple like, of tarps. Doom. Yes. Yeah, it's it's got issues. But I had multiple um, people inside the building who listened to the show, who reached out and said, "You can have my ticket. I don't want it." <laughs> Which is like, you know, I think that was the, nice. that's a positive thing about our company, about this corporation. It shows that there's still a human element uh, to the operation. Right, I feel that. Um, so uh, Randy's sitting in. Thank yes. you, Randy, my uh, for holding it down today. Like we said. Uh, yes, the, the free agency 213 is coming, but the one of record right now, it is the Greg Rosenthal free agency 101, and we're going to get to that and, and dig into it. But before we do that, let's hit the news. Awaiting the snap, Justin oh, Fields, moving off, off the left side, free play for Justin, worked it down the left side. He's got DJ Moore at the five, loping into the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown Bears, and they're back in front. Mm, so many big moments uh, for Justin Fields uh, this past season. Not maybe has not lived up to 
the highest of uh, you know expectations, but he certainly has flashed multiple times in Chicago. And now with the Bears in a major crossroads moment, we talked about it with Connie Fox uh, on the Monday show. The Bears have to make a decision what they're going to do. We talked about it in the news that Justin Fields had unfollowed um, the Bears on social media, which of course is a, becomes a story in today's football culture. Um, he was a guest on the Everybody's Got a Podcast now. I, Anybody I, like, noticing I, this? I do not know every a player, human being that does not have a podcast. But this every week. player, this is the newer thing. Now, podcasts are hugely popular now, obviously, and media folk like ourselves, that makes sense. But now it seems as if almost every player in the league has a podcast, as does uh, Amon Ross St. Brown on the St. Brown Bros podcast posted on Wednesday. Here is Justin Fields when asked about his move to unfollow the Bears on social media. Ooh, why do people take social media so serious? Like, <laughs> but like why, why are you not following follow the Bears? This and that. Like, I still mess with the Bears. This and that. I'm just trying to take a little break. I, I unfollow the Bears and the NFL, bro. I'm not just trying to have football on my timeline. Like, mm, <laughs> I don't believe that at all. And here, Wait, I do. He said he was going on vacation and he's just sick of seeing all the like fields reporting and stuff. And they, but he unfollowed the Bears. The Bears don't even, have that reporting. Sure, they're putting out stuff of like college stuff of like what should we do with the draft, you know, stuff like that. I I don't think it's that yeah, crazy. but like, <laughs> but if you unfollow your team during this yeah. time, it's going to lead to many more distractions that yeah. he has to deal with. I would anyway. say that there's a tonal difference in like when Kyler Murray created all that drama a couple of years ago and kind of started this trend. He said he was, yeah, he's tired of hearing. He's that. the Godfather. And uh, does Justin Fields want to stay in Chicago? Do you want to stay in Chicago or what's up? Yeah, of course. Of course, I want to stay. Um, to be honest, bro, I'll be trying to like, you know, with all the talk, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, I guess kind of just boom be in one place. But I can't see myself playing in another place. But I know how that league is. Like EQ, you was probably the same way uh, before you left Green Bay. But I mean, if it was up to me, I would want to stay in Chicago. I love right. the city. The city's lit. The the fans there, you know, they're great, mm -hmm. and the people. But um. <laughs> It's a business. I ain't got no control over it. So whatever right. happens, happens. But I feel like the biggest thing with all this going on right now, I just want it to be over. Mm. So I get that. That I get. Yeah. And that I believe that it's it's it, it's weighing on him. And uh, and we'll see. We'll find out soon enough what happens. I think he's like because, uh, you know, you get you get later on in your career as a quarterback and you can pack in like a no trade clause or a need to agree to a trade. You know, if something's going to happen, if there's quarterback movement and more than there than ever before in, in the history of the league. But he is powerless. Like, if they move him, he doesn't have any choice over that. And, like, a team that probably has a lot of issues is going to want to trade for him. And it's like you're a couple years into a career where, like, there's zero patience at quarterback, and suddenly Justin Fields, like a first-round pick, is getting moved. And who knows where he winds up, and his life has changed entirely. Mm. Yeah, it's – he's – our off season's just starting, you know. But he's been in it for, what, six weeks now. And he has seen countless tweets and posts on Instagram and everything, like, wondering if he's going to be there and he probably knows the score that it's less likely and it must be a powerless annoying position. He could just use the mute button. You know, I feel like that. I uh, mean, I just looked at work. the Bears Although Instagram. On Instagram when you mute people, sometimes it still kind of shows up anyways. <laughs> so all, I, I all the bears have on their on Instagram vacation. is like happy birthdays and thank yous and appointments of coaches. It's not, <laughs> it's not like, what will we do about Justin Fields? We love the college kids. Um, but you know, let, by the way, and that's why free agency is so important and how amazing it is to think that until like the early nineties, I think they didn't even have free agency for the players in any real way. So it, it could, it's going to be, and I think, I think the real story is he knows what's happening. Just like we all kind of know what direction this seems to be heading, that he will be traded and then that team will control his, his rights and could pick up his fifth year option and then maybe franchise tag him he's a couple years away potentially from having any real power over where he wants to play. And uh, that's part of the reason why it's a bummer for him that the bears thing didn't quite take one little note on their side. I, that looks like an entertaining podcast and they're obviously, they can get good guests. That's, that's nice. But um, little microphone tip, like I could hear an airplane in the background. Ooh. Mm. So I just, you know, these are the things em. that, you know, with time and experience, that's a loss, you know, but what a em. win the producers and, you know, Equinemius and, and Amon Rot, they must've been pretty excited when they were like, Oh, we got Fields on like the day that he uh, followed because I'm <laughs> sure it was planned ahead of time. Nice. It's just like a big, beautiful time. We're getting some pop on the Around the NFL podcast. It's big times. Beautiful timing. Uh, in other news, I love this story. Uh, and uh, 
listeners of this pod uh, know that Nick Sirianni has been on my radar for a long time. Uh, and before the, the Eagles went up in flames uh, last year after their 10 and one start, they just lost out uh, essentially and then got embarrassed in the playoffs. And it all kind of started with Big Dom, uh, the curse of Big Dom, who is the security officer on the sideline, the chief security officer who was banned for, from the sidelines for the regular season, the, the bounce of the regular season after a December 3rd incident and a blowout loss to the Niners in which he had made contact or gotten to a, like a sideline quarrel with uh, Dre Greenlaw of San Francisco. And this is wonderful. I just love this. Derek Gunn, who is a Philadelphia radio host, been there for a long time. Uh, I'm just going to read the whole tweet. It's got a little other juice in it, too. Um, and it gives you an idea of <laughs> a lot. According to sources, Jalen. Th- I love this, by the way. Radio guy tweet. This one got ignored, I think, because people were confused. Yeah, Jaylen it's a little started. weird. According to sources, Jalen, big contract, pulled in numerous directions on slash off field, put him under a lot of pressure. He didn't handle well. Ellipses. Big Dom suspended dash controls Sirianni's emotion on sideline <laughs> comma in his absence. Nick gets in numerous arguments with players slash coaches during games. So <laughs> that's the headline that Sirianni, as soon as big Dom was banned from the sideline, could not could no longer control himself and was just fighting with everyone. And that perhaps, I guess this is um, uh, inferring, led in part to the meltdown of the entire operation. It's it is it. like the, the most unbelievable me. NFL offseason story I can think of in a long time. But if, if that's we, true, that if that's true, the they coach? kept the head coach. That's wild. I mean, we kind of flashpoint flashpoint focused this All a little it. bit because we know, you know, there was the trend that the team went one and five down the stretch without Dom. But it's wild Still to waiting me for that um, bonus as the associate producer for presenting that guest that week. Under incoming, incoming. Inco- we'll have a sit down. Yeah, we'll discuss. We we'll, have, we'll break bread, Mark and I. About yeah, that, that, that while was we're big, celebrating, I said that was a big moment for for me, and and I haven't really seen anything. We'll get there. We're, we're gonna break bread after the uh, top two thirteen blows up. <laughs> sure, and over uh, big cigars and a bl- gra- glass of brandy on a a brown suede couch, leather couch. We'll touch on that. Okay. That's yeah. good. We'll Sorry hit on that item. Yeah. No, not at all. But I just, I, this to me is just, it kind of confirms everything, Dan, you were saying about Sirianni, where I don't think it, that felt, it felt like a, a, a you thing. And now it's clearly a real Eagles thing. It's good to get a dub every once in a while. <sighs> yeah. I, when he was shouting at the, I think it was the Kansas City fans after they kind of lucked into that primetime win, that was a tipping point for gross. me personally. Yeah. And I then love it, that it for pretty the much all fa- fell apart. I, you Whoa, do wait, worry. What, was, what was that, Greg? I love that for the Eagles. <laughs> you do? <laughs> uh, I don't love this for the Eagles. He feels very diminished in terms of his leadership. Like the owner and Howie, I think, came in and made some decisions about the coordinators, you know, that, that they wanted him to have possibly, and, and the players are smart enough to know that. And then you, this report comes out and just in, in general, I think it puts you in a tough spot as a, as a leader going into the season that like this information is out there and it makes you think about how AJ Brown reacted and really how all the players reacted. Like there is, there has been no smoking gun, like no, great answer for what happened there. It just, it's one of the most mystifying like meltdowns of any team I can remember. He shot up the hot butts rankings in unprecedented fashion. <laughs> right. Like, it it is right. Super Bowl they were, they were the one seed and they went from the, not only the one seed, but like the best record in the NFL by two games at that point to being a little surprised. Uh, he even kept the job. What did you think Dan of the Jalen part of it? I, well, you know, I've, I've been wondering about Jalen too. And because there was obviously a leadership void there when the, when the team went down in flames and that it kind of begins with the quarterback. And I thought that quarterback and head coach, I mean, that's how locker rooms are won and lost in a lot of ways. So I don't, we don't know really, and maybe more will come out, but I think it's pretty clear that Sirianni is his, he's in a vulnerable place and maybe doesn't have a real handle on the team anymore. And I think we'll learn more about Jalen hurts this year. This is such a huge season for the whole operation. Obviously I'm checking out the rest of Derek Gunn's tweets, by the way, because I, Kind of blown away by the structure of that tweet. <laughs> uh, that's not typically how he tweets, and he's usually in a little shorter bursts. Mm. Uh, so maybe that's when he starts more of a, a detail oriented. But that's a tough one in the sense that um, that that's the one that probably has gotten more notice than anything he's ever sent out. 
you want to he's put had, together a fully formed paragraph. He's one time. of those local reporters, and he, I know he's respected there in Philadelphia. We were, he'll just have like one or two bomb drops per year. That's a good one. Stuff like that. You like, to be, you like to be that guy, but you don't want to leave the comma a space away from from this, you know, the word. And if you're going to do an ellipses, hit like, us with, I love hit that us we're with, editing the tweet now. <laughs> hit us with the third, the third uh, period. If you're going to do an ellipses, don't hit us with two. But Greg, you also on, you know, and I don't roam uh, X. Good job, often. Mr. Gunn. I'll have lots of typos. You will. You, you, you seem intentionally, you would go intentionally to kind of zig on capitalization, non-capitalization on your tweets. That's and, st- that's stylized. That's I think so too. Stylized, I, I'm not right. saying it's a yeah. mistake written. Uh, Always, effort, yeah. But it's, it's, that's intentional. Yeah, very intentional. L- lack of punctuation, <laughs> uh, lack of capitalization. It happens. I want to move into what you know, Derek Gunn. No, but also to, like to, Mar- wait, to the Mark's last point. tweet is like, oh, go ahead. You know, is is a nice <laughs> look at some seasoned uh, chicken on the grill. So I want to get into those kind of tweets. That's that's good. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes to, and it's not just Greg, I've done this as well. Sometimes you don't capitalize and you don't punctuate. And it's almost kind of like a, it's a way of expressing your take in a, almost a matter of fact tone or almost a little bit of a, mm. a, like a sarcastic tone. I mean, I get how it works. Like, I don't, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying that's Greg. It's like a loose medium. Think, I don't think that Greg's, I Hardly think it's intentional. But I, I, do, I yeah. do too. I think it's a, it's a choice. And he's, he's, you know, I don't think I know that Greg, as, as the editor of the Around the NFL section of the website, understands basic and yeah. also complex grammatical. I think Twitter, rules. the rules are different on Twitter. You know, it's a it's a lighter medium. It, it's not worthy of punctuation. I think it helps you appear youthful and uh, you know. This, with a, this is a bad pocket. We're bad at this now. Um, let's move on. <laughs> uh, let's uh, get into. Oh, all right. You know what? I'm gonna get out of the way. Yeah, Greg? me too. Me I too. feel like we're. This here is the good news. I feel like we're running out of these where right. we have to throw it to Greg because it's a Patriot retiring. Because how many more can there be? Because now we're at special special teams ace Matthew Slater. And uh, if we're at the special teams ace, we have to be near the end. Go yeah, ahead. Well, Dante the floor Hightower, is yours. Dante Hightower was just hired as part of this staff. Uh, so, like, we'll we'll now get to live through these guys as, as coaches, uh, which I'm injured. Gerard Mayo, too. Although, I don't. Gerard Mayo. Well, we Mayo. don't have to live. Yeah. <laughs> it's a personal choice. Look, if uh, Bill Belichick says that he's the greatest core special teams player in You NFL want inspirational history. music under this? Let, go ahead. I don't need it to be long. I'm just go saying, ahead. let's give us a little inspiration. Put it out there. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Matthew Slater is the best special teams core player in the history of the league, according to Bill Belichick, a pretty great expert on special. I teams. thought he was an expert on football until nobody hired him. Ten, <laughs> ten time uh, Pro Bowl, mm-hmm. Pro Bowler, two time first team All Pro. Mm-hmm. I don't think that um, makes you a Hall of Famer personally, but uh, a Ring of Honor guy for the Patriots and just uh, you know a unique career, the son of a, an all time great. Jackie Slater. I the one thing about I didn't know that. Just give some yeah. just give give some love to a special teams ace. And he all, he was a fifth round pick who really was in danger of not making the team right out of the gate and made this choice to make special teams his thing. I always found it weird though cuz I'll never forget going to the Rams like intro in Los Angeles where it was like they brought all the LA press in and you know hoopla and all that business. But like Jackie Slater like a Hall of Famer was there and Jackie Slater is 6 foot 4. 277 pounds and Matt Slater is six feet tall, 205 pounds. You don't typically see a son that isn't like, why didn't you, pro- I would have thought odds on would say you produce another well, like, you know who's guard or tackle. She's three foot six. She's a real pearl. Well, I was, Tiny. I actually, that was where my mind went. The mom or someone must be very small in the equation. And there are generations that get skipped with certain things. Yeah. And we don't know the whole story. I mean, you know. Let me know now that I got the Twitter thing. Here's, let me get into genetics. Okay. It's it's a science, but well, an uneven science in a way. You care you, for me you've to made it, No, you've made it so crystal clear for me. I mean, you're making it sound like six foot 205 is some like mini guy. It's not. Slater, but it's. You'd be like, oh, that's an it's impressive. How often uh, are you four inches shorter and 70 pounds lighter than your than your dad? Okay. That was also Jackie Slater's playing weight. Yes. He's, he's trimmed down a little, but he's not a, he's not diminutive. Jackie Slater's tell only, me more. Dan. Only fifty percent of the DNA of Matthew Slater comes from Jackie. I did not know that. that that's that. So we that, need. That, 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 <laughs> okay, that's uh, uh, that's what's happening in the news. Before, uh, actually, let's take a break, and then uh, I want to cover one bit of behind the scenes. Uh, 
a, ma- a massive conversation that needs to be had. And then we're going to get to the 101. Let's take a break. All right, welcome back. So uh, you may remember about a week or so, we can have or so before the Super Bowl, we had our annual Don't Say Super Bowl episode where we cannot utter the words. And if you do, there's a monetary penalty. And uh, all three of us incurred fines. Um, also, we, uh, and this maybe seems a little unfair, uh, Eric, I announced after the fact, uh, anything that he missed in terms of the buzzer, uh, he would have to pick up the fine. So he's into this now, the pot. And then we were like, all right, what are we going to do with the money? And uh, got an idea. So Big Funk, let's bring back Big Funk behind the glass. <laughs> What's up? He didn't really go anywhere. Where's this, yeah. where's this going? <laughs> All right. What's up, Funk? What's happening? Uh, Big Funk ha- has had a distinguished, for a young man, a distinguished career uh, in <laughs> broadcasting. <laughs> sure. Um, part of his journey was at a, a radio station. Uh, and I don't know, I can't speak to any of the, the talent working there, either good or bad. And uh, so this isn't a hit piece. Uh, your former employer, I don't know if you want to name them. It's up to you. Uh, I mean... Do you think, you know where I'm going, by the way? I, I have a hunch. Um, uh, but anyway, the, it was like a Z Morning Zoo type thing. And uh, there, was a, there was a radio uh, bit uh, where the diehard Packers fan, Randy Chavez, uh, was offered a sum of money. How much, Funk? A thousand bucks. One G. Whoa. Ten rocks. Uh, if he got a tattoo of a rival of the Packers on his body. Yeah. The catch, of course, being uh, it must be done live on air. And I think we do. We have any footage from this incident? (laughs) Any rival? Uh, Well, I'll I'll explain in in a second. Here. All right. And now we're watching it on this radio. When was this? How long ago was this? Oh, man. This is like three, four years ago. Fun fact. The guy tattooing me is on McMaster's. Oh, very good. So at least it was something professional. So there's Funk, and check it out on the YouTube channel. It looks painful on his thigh, and it looks like a Chicago Bears Wow. If you you subscribe to our Patreon, you can see an exclusive uh, version (laughs) of this, which is a little racy. It really is. I haven't seen this video in years. This is so... uh, We might have to blur it. It's it's that uh, salacious and sexy. But, Funk, so (laughs) here's what the plan is, because I don't like that. I you can take it back and show. I don't want. I personally, uh, to put a young radio producer in that position, like, hey, for the bit on the show, uh, tattoo yourself, and we'll give you some money. Like when I was however old you were there, twenty three years old or whatever, <laughs> I would have taken the thousand too because I had to pay rent. Yeah. Yeah. So I have an issue now. Here's the question. Yeah, are you okay with that t- tattoo in the modern times? Or does it annoy you a little bit that it's still on your leg? It do, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it does. It does annoy me a little bit more so because every time I go anywhere at all, usually someone I roll with, whenever there's like a lull, like a little bit of silence, it's always like, you know, Randy has a bear's tattoo uh, on his leg. Okay, so that's so, exactly where we step in on this podcast <laughs> with the money that we've raised from Don't Say Super Bowl, and perhaps with the help of the listeners, I propose we eliminate that t- tattoo from Randy's leg, either through laser removal or, um, <laughs> or go the Johnny Depp route, uh, the why no forever route where we could uh, modify it and turn it into something else. I know it was fairly intricate. Um, how do you feel do about, that. how do you feel about that as a possibility? I mean, I'm not opposed to it, right? I, I, I don't get me wrong. The tat the tattoo is, is a, a funny reminder, I guess, depends how you consider funny of what I, like my, where it was before years ago, mm-hmm. but, I have no problem covering it up. You know? But that's, it's near, it's merely an option, of course. Of now, course, yeah. So if, if Randy is, if that's something he would want, like if that's ever something that crossed your mind, like if I could do it over again yeah. and get rid of it, or if I could, you know, cover it up somehow, we, the Around the NFL podcast and our, our, our listeners are here to help. Well, after viewing the, the tattoo, I, I don't think we can cover it up. Like we were like, oh, can we change it into the Packers logo? It's like that's no, like they can I, do amazing things though. I know that I don't have tattoos myself, but they can do amazing know, things in that realm. That's what the Bears you, tattoo. It's the it's the face. It's got to be too tough. I think it either needs to be 
It's a very Greg right. thing to just assume Remove. that they can't because I feel like if we got someone on the phone, he'd say like, "Oh yeah, we could definitely do something." Well, the guy that did it to begin with attitude. probably knows. He sounds like his career. But I mean, I don't know if we can get him. But you could also <laughs> catch like F you Chicago Bears. Well, so my my backup plan, my backup plan was like I would just write "sucks" underneath yeah. it sometime. Oh, and I mean, I've, I've added more pieces to my leg since. But um, I mean, you know, I'm I'm not a I have nothing. I love tattoos, so I have no problem adding more stuff to my leg. It's it's just you know it tells a story to me. It's memories. I have I don't have the best memory, but looking at tattoos it reminds me of where I was, and it takes me back to a place. So I you, like you seem anymore. somewhat attached to it, actually. No, it's just it's not, I don't like the Bears. I'm a Packers fan. So and we're like, certainly not going to do what those shock jocks did once upon a time <laughs> and put pressure on you. <laughs> it's merely an option if if you want to go down that road. I wouldn't mind seeing some mock-ups from each of you guys. Ideas. Oh, so you so you would prefer <laughs> instead of the removal some sort of. Uh, adjustment potentially i'm 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 not opposed to anything really honestly because that's then like a two-part process okay right okay an add-on okay and now i think whether it's our listeners um on social media whether it's the subreddit or wherever if if we can get some you know if it's if randy does give us the go-ahead to do some uh crowdsource fundraising because i don't know the cost it could be potentially <laughs> pricey uh yeah. but we're we're going to use the 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 power of this platform uh, to to make uh, Randy Chavez's right leg uh, pure again. I appreciate the offer. Yeah. That's very nice of you guys. I've never had someone uh, extend such a generous offer such as that to myself. So I think Dan, for you, the streak, your streak of charitable, uh, you know, behavior. We've we've got a couple of mementos over in the corner of the studio. It just adds Football. to that legacy. Yeah, from because this uh, was your Clemson coach, your idea. So you are a banana. Dave Bossini. He uh, he sent me What's an autograph ball. Again? Dabo, <laughs> Dave Oswano. He sent me that ball for the helping those underprivileged kids find, <laughs> find a home. It was like the business. That is not. It was like the that. future business leaders of America or whatever. <laughs> All that work I did with the orphans down in Clemson. Th- now I now I can add. This is yeah. You're right. I didn't look at it that way, but it's yeah. starting to turn into. Well, you're selfless. Like a list. You wouldn't you wouldn't see it that way, but others Never. others can help but see it. All right, way. it's going to be up to Randy though. I, I think we could afford it. Uh, I'm looking at the price. I think we could afford. Okay, it. Okay, good. We uh, Funk. Uh, yeah. Let's give you one week. Okay. And uh, we'll circle back. We'll let you kind of really ruminate okay. and think on it. All right. Because I understand that is part of the, the ink journey for people, that it did take Natural. you. That's a place in time. That's where you were then. Yeah. We're not here to change, rewrite history. Mm. I will say, though, you three happen to be some of the most creative guys I know. Oh, thank you. Keep going. Truthfully, I mean it. Um, Who's so- Eric? <laughs> so if you guys if you guys want to come with some fun ideas, I'm also open okay. to that, too. I would, oh, I would okay. genuinely would like to, I would like to see what you guys can you I get us just a photo of it so that I can, I will yeah. work on it, some yeah, mock-ups potentially sure. in my free time. What about that course. old, uh, you don't see it as much anymore, but remember the cars that had, let's say, a Dallas Cowboys logo, and then it would be Calvin and Hobbes yeah. like, urinating on the logo. I remember those. That would be a little bit of a throwback, uh, for instance. I, I, I do love Calvin and Hobbes, big Bill Waterson mm. fan. But oh, I, wait but, a second. But getting, have some, yeah. getting Calvin peeing on my leg might be, because he'd have to be giant. The logo is big enough where... Yeah. The Calvin would have to take up most of my leg, and that <laughs> would probably be a bit of a hard sell. Yeah. All right. Well, that's just one idea. But see that creativity. We I are like idea it. men here. Thinking outside the box. Appreciate you guys always. You got it, Funk. All right. I feel like uh, I feel like that was progress and a potentially great situation for us. Well, you're giving him the choice, uh, which I like. He's one got, week. You know, right. He has what? You have one week. No, you have one week. All right. Here we go. Moving on. Free agency 101. How many years have you been doing this on, uh, whether it's NFL media or your old job at, at NBC, Auto World? Like how long have you been doing a free agency list, Greg? I don't know, 15 years or so. And do you find yourself, because I certainly was, and when I was in the power rankings game, I was very competitive about it. I wanted to have the best power rankings. Do you have certain people, and you don't have to name them, Mm -hmm. that you kind of use as a measuring stick and you want uh, to reach that bar or exceed it? I don't like to look at the other list until mine's out. Okay, yeah, once you've done yours. So I think the PFF you you mentioned, they they do a lot of work uh, out there because I've seen them send in some tweets. They they shake it up different ways. They got got a lot of uh, production behind it. That looks great. They, uh, and they have something I don't like that I to, really like, by the way, which is a comp, free agency comp for that player in past years. Which I don't like to look at it until mine's out because then you just end up like it's like mock drafters end up just like 
making a combination of all the other mock drafts. I never, I never, I, I do the like same thing with that. power rankings. Never look for anybody else. I will. Else I will. A lot of, they all do great. Great. Pete Excellent. Crisco does one. And you enjoy doing it? I do. Yeah, it's a it good It kind of really does start the off season in yeah. a lot of ways because the this off season journey begins with free agency. Uh, well, kind of begins with the coach and staff hiring cycles into free agency, and then of course the draft, and all of a sudden teams are pretty much fully. It's the formed. first time we've ever let it go exclusively on the podcast for the first time. Oh. This is, you know, nice little pop. Hmm. That that's that's fan for, fanfare horn once more <laughs> because I did not know that. Hit it. You hear that? ATN I- 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 exclusive. Greg Rosenthal, Free Agency 101. So let's get into it, Greg. And we can, and Mark, you and I will um, kind of uh, prod around the list ourselves. And Greg's going to throw out some things that he took away from putting it together. We do look at other lists before we do our list. Yeah. Yes. I studied the list, of course, because we have our big Free Agency 213 coming up. Uh, and that takes a lot of research about the genre. Uh, but uh, the top 10, uh, just so people know, and then we can go anywhere we want. Okay. Uh, number one, Chris Jones. Number two, Kirk Cousins. Number three, T. Higgins. Number four, Josh Allen. That's Josh Allen of the Jags, the pass rusher. Number five, Christian Wilkins. Number six, Brian Burns. Number seven, LeJarrius Sneed. Number eight, Justin Mata, uh, Matabuke, right? Buke? Buke, yeah. Yeah. At number nine, Antoine Winfield. And number 10, Daniil Hunter. Uh, I have to say my big picture and right on the outside of the uh, top 10, Mike Evans, one of the great, most consistent wide receivers uh, of this era or any other era, potentially about to reach free agency. I love this list this year. And and I know it's going to be pillaged Greggy by uh, franchise tags. That window just opened. And then, you know, uh, anything else uh, that goes down. Uh, but uh, the list itself, I feel like if you're a team that needs to make upgrades, Almost every major position has some studs. I think it's a strong list. It's a big drop off, maybe after the top thirteen or fourteen. You know, you mentioned Evans, Jalen Johnson's a really good one with the Bears, Michael Pittman, and then it, there's kind of a drop off. And most of those players probably are getting tagged, like eight, I would guess, right. if I had to put an over under out of those fourteen players. But I'm with you. I think it's a good list, and I think there's another drop off around forty or so. It feels like you could do a, you know, it's a good thing you're doing 213 because it does feel deeper. I don't know what it is with the trend of the NFL, just more players on short term contracts is what I suspect that there's like 140 good players, like guys that can actually help your team. So I think it's a deeper list and it's pretty high quality. You're right throughout. And for the first time in a long time, you know, one and two, Chris Jones and Kirk Cousins. They could actually change teams. You, right. don't, you don't see that too often. It's odd. I mean, I think there are years when you kind of take a larger look at the class of free agents and it's like, all right, we're going to hype this up and we're going to talk about it a lot, but you're kind of struggling to find real juice. But this list is dotted with intriguing, especially on offense, I think, in- intriguing wide receivers, running backs, or a couple quarterbacks out there. And right away, it's like, I in the top 10, I look at the Chiefs and the Vikings as having a lot of tough decisions to make to try to navigate this. They've got right. four of the top 10. So Cousins and Hunter both have elements in their contract that say they can't be tagged, which is amazing for them. I mean, Hunter mm-hmm. is gonna, and, and the Vikings can't afford both, and maybe that informs whether, how you know, how aggressive they are in trying to keep Kirk Cousins if they want to keep Hunter or, or neither. Who really knows? And then the Jones-Sneed example with a, a Super Bowl champion. I can't think of anything like it because Chris Jones got such a big contract last year. He doesn't have the tag number, which would be, I think, under $20 million. Instead, his tag number is 32. And that really raises an interesting question with this Chiefs team that can you sign both of these guys? Can you sign Jones long term and tag Snead or, or vice versa with all the money they're already paying to Mahomes and, and the rest of the contract? Uh, that they they're looking at maybe adding a wide receiver. I don't think you can. And when I think logically about it, I actually think it's more logical that they tag Snead, kick that can down the road and that Chris Jones might leave. And they just might realize like you have to make tough decisions. We've gotten the very best out of this guy. He's getting a little older and we can't tag him for 32. And it's going to be so hard to get him signed before free agency starts that actually the move is to tag Snead 
and that Chris Jones gets out there and just makes yeah. an absolute killing somewhere. Here's, I kind of think that's what's going to happen. And I know what you were saying, Mark, on the last show, because I agree with you. you. Sometimes it's free agency when a big fish does shake free, and they sign with a bad team looking to make a big splash. And I mentioned how PFF has, has these um, comparison players in recent years. And the comparison player is exactly what you're talking about. And Dominican Sue, who right. obviously the Lions were in a powerhouse when he was there, but he was the face of that franchise. He signs a massive deal with a kind of under the radar, struggling Dolphins operation at that point. And he kind of like just disappeared in a lot of ways. He was still a big time player. Yeah, he was fine. But he was, it wasn't like as impactful as if he would have went to a big time team or if the Lions figured out around him. The, the interesting thing about the Chiefs, not to get off course here, but... No, I think they're, they're to me, the most interesting conversation. If they do, t- say, go the route you're talking about, keep the cornerback, and, be, and Snead is so valuable in the Spags defense, uh, Chris Jones, obviously the most valuable, but cornerbacks and cornerbacks who could cover is a huge deal for that day. What's great about the, being the Chiefs is even if they just won a Super Bowl with a... Great defense and Patrick Mahomes as a game general, and and they found their way back to the Lombardi. There is a fun way where they save that money and let Jones walk, like you're saying, try to find an, a, someone that can fill at the void and then attack the offense and build another super offense around the greatest quarterback alive. They they have like some different angles they can go here, and the team can end up being a lot different in structure than the one that just won the Super Bowl. Uh, be interesting to see. There is like that again. We mentioned like on the last show that Chris Jones sounds like he wants to stay in Kansas City. Right. Now money and a monster deal from someone. Everyone kind of says that. Like that. Justin Fields just said that, and he probably wants. But that this situation is a little more special than like certain other players sticking, you know, sticking with that Ham and Egger type team where they've been for a while. Like you can win more Super Bowls, you can get paid really well in some form or fashion, but they're in a tricky. But situation. to my point, so if you have, if you do attack offense instead. The Chiefs have a list like running backs, for instance. Great example. Mm-hmm. I know they like their running backs, but Saquon, Henry, Jacobs, uh, Eckler, wide receivers, which they certainly need. Higgins, Evans, Pittman, Ridley. These are all options out there potentially right now anyway, but some of these guys will be gone, but some will be out Evans there. would be a fascinating one, and people have connected so you, them to him. If they have some money to spend, like getting that second receiver or first receiver would, would be a game changer for them. Very they can fun. create uh, a... A lot of cap space. They're already well under. They could cut MVS. They can move the money around in, in Mahomes' contract. They have some people they can cut. And so they they could make it all work. And there's a very recent example of them letting Charvarius Ward leave for a big contract uh, to San Francisco. And that worked. And, and they might feel that, like, cornerback is a position that they can develop and Spags is so good at doing that, that they'll let Snead go. But and I could be totally wrong they, and that they'll view Jones as the irreplaceable one because he is more irreplaceable. That's why his number is so much higher. Their defensive line is quite thin if they didn't have Chris Jones. But it's a very, it's a compelling conversation. It's just that Snead's so much younger that right. I do wonder if they think about timelines. But to be clear, they can't do both. They can't keep Snead, they give a try. massive contract to Jones and make, big splash in free agency on the offense. Well, not the probably thir- not the third all part three. Would be That's what right. I mean. They, yeah, they have to make not. a decision. And I can't imagine they went through this whole season, even after winning the Super Bowl, not thinking, man, we got to make some type of moves on offense. I agree with that. Better I think support. they'll be aggressive getting a wide receiver and, and keep one of these two guys, uh, but not both. And, and Steed was someone I, I passed this list around in early forms and Steed was someone. I just think if he gets free, the league loves him. You know, he's just, there's no cornerbacks on this list. Jalen Johnson, I'm almost certain is going to get tagged this like at some positions, there's just not any players. The two positions are are cornerback and tackle. So if Snead did somehow shake free, he'd make an obscene amount of money. And I I think they'd want to just, that's where I like free agency to me feels like a bit of fool's gold. If you're the team that goes and gets some of these players, because part of Snead's like success and journey is, how he's used by Spags, how he fits in that defense. I mean, no not doubt. that it wouldn't translate somewhere else, but I think if you suddenly are the Chiefs minus like Chris Jones, it becomes a gaping void where you, you, everyone visually can realize how special he's been on that defense. The, he's just in such a good spot. He's kind of like Kirk Cousins when he left Washington, that it's just so rare to actually have all this leverage where maybe they can tag him. Maybe they just feel like, well, let's need go. We'll make some moves. We'll put the $32 million on him somehow, uh, and then we'll get a long-term deal worked out that lowers that 
number at some point. Uh, but that number is so big because he knows now if he could somehow get to free agency, he's going to make more than Aaron Donald. Like he's going to make the most any defensive player has ever made there. The salary cap is reportedly going up to around $250 million, according to pro football talk. We don't really know. It could be anywhere from 243 to 250, but either way it's going up a lot. Mm. Where else do you want to go, Greg? What jumped out to you? Um, well, I'll, let's go 10th to 20, just because that that is more fun, big names. Daniel Hunter, we mentioned, was 10. Evans is 11. Jalen Johnson, I think, is going to get tagged at, at 12. Michael Pittman, I think, will also probably get tagged with the Colts. And then it's Tyron Smith, the only good tackle on the market. Saquon Barkley, to me, easily the best running back on the market. Calvin Ridley, an interesting situation where the Jaguars get a better draft pick or have to give away a better draft pick if they re-sign Ridley. So they're incentivized to not sign Calvin Ridley at this point. So a good chance he gets free. Jonathan Grenard of the Texans, uh, Leonard Williams, Michael Owenyu, who who's the highest uh, guard tackle I have, and then Chauncey Gardner Johnson. That's 10 to 20. And, and one of the reasons Owenyu's up there and Tyron Smith's up there is because like, the two positions that are just not on this list are cornerback and tackle. And it just says a lot. I think about the NFL It's like you can get defensive tackles. You can even get defensive linemen, but there's like no tackles, no cornerbacks available whatsoever. You got to get those in the draft. Defensive tackle is not the easiest to find necessarily find in the draft sometimes as well at that yeah. one position. But an, one name that stands out to me, because part of this, like I think smart free agency is keeping core people around, especially if you have a young quarterback, like the Colts cannot let Michael Pittman go in my book. I don't think that he's a, uh, flashy number one type of guy in every in, in all aspects of his game. But it's like he is imperative to what they're trying to do on offense and what they're trying to build. Well, I, I he might be the worst receiver group in the league if he's gone. I think he's one of the more interesting cases if, if he ever did get to free agency because he has produced even with a lot of bad quarterback play. But he's also maybe not a, a, a game changer necessarily. So how possession like again like where he's i i would love him as a 1b or a 2 yes. as opposed to split, paying him like a 1 especially as like we're saying like there's so many good wide receivers coming out of the draft every year and every round uh he's a guy that you see those like Kenny Galladay is a good example not that they're similar players but where you get paid he'll be our number 1 our true number 1 and he wasn't and then all of a sudden it doesn't work out the guy Tyron Smith jumps out to me he's he's on your list where is he on your list i think 13 14 like, I think, for instance, my team, the Jets, are going to be all over Tyron Smith because they're going to want to sign a big tackle and then draft a tackle uh, with their pick. And that's going to be great news for Smith because if, if there's not a lot of big tackles on the market and there's a desperate team like the Jets, that's going to drive his market up. So he is going to get a lot of money, maybe more than he deserves at this point. In he his played career, great last year, though. He stayed healthy. What's for, his age, though? Where is he at? He's, I think, now up to 35. Five, he's going to get a lot. He's going to get more money than you would think a 35 year old uh, tackle. He's 33, actually. OK, uh, my best turn 33. So, yeah, look, he was on the Hall of Fame all 2010s team. I mean, this is a, a guy who's probably making the Hall of Fame someday and had really struggled with injuries the three previous years. But he had a healthy year this last year. I think that he actually might get to free agency because Tyler Smith, uh, who they drafted, is, is quite good. You know, GM Aaron is going to be all over that one. Right. And yeah. uh Huh. And again, it's a position that it's so bad. Michael Owenwu, uh, for the pa P Patriots who can play guard or tackle, I think he's best at right tackle. He's going to get paid a lot of money because there's just not many young players available. And then after that, it's just like, come on. It's like Trent Brown, who's a bit of a nightmare in terms of injuries and like off field stuff where he'll have one good year and then he becomes a headache. He's the next guy. Maybe Jonah Williams, who Bengals fans probably oh, aren't please. in love with, but at least he can just play. Uh, Illuminor, who is with the, the Raiders. These guys he are can just play as those are where you get in trouble. The signing. <laughs> right. They're exactly. having yeah. to work around Jonah Williams. Right. And, and, yeah. and some fun guy. Like I saw s someone I did see that had Becton, you know, like Becton is might get some money just because he played last year. And big like, ticket. And he was bad, by the way. Right. And there's no one available. So th there's some projects out there. But but those positions uh, get paid. You you mentioned a classic one, by the way. Pittman. I think he will get tagged. I think Evans will get out there, though, and it is fascinating to think, like, where could he go? And then I think of who else will get out there at wide receiver. Marquise Brown, I think, is going to be that guy you mentioned. Not He's not going to be like Galladay because I think he's a good player, but he's going to make more than people expect because him and Ridley, they're fast and they're available, and you kind of need three receivers, and they can be one of your three receivers. They can be your two or your three. They're not your one 
a two, like a Pittman, is probably worth $20 million a year now. So people are going to have sticker shock. But Marquise Brown or Calvin Ridley will probably get $20 million Well, it's like year. years in a row where the wide receiver paydays for free agency have been insane. I mean, I guess you could find a team that really needed that wideout help, and you could almost pair like a Marquise Brown with another wide receiver on the free agent market and completely change... You're running. You I have, like Marquise Brown. Yeah, I but do you want to pay twenty million for Marquise Brown? No, go get a guy in the second round. But it's kind of like when Kirk Christian Kirk got paid seventeen million a year a couple years ago, and man, that looked bad at the time. And now I'm like, actually, he's pretty dependable, and you need receivers, and that's like an okay price. That's just how it is, I think. Yeah, like you, I'd have no problem with you putting um, Higgins ab- above Evans. I mean, I think Higgins, you know, they could. They could tag him too if they want. They but like, probably will tag him, but the Bengals are such a mysterious operation. But is that an right age now. thing a little bit for you with yes. Evans? And like, because what I kind of wonder what kind of contract I think Evans could find himself, go to a playoff type team and be in a wonderful playing situation. But like, what do you pay him? He's, is he 30? 31. 31. Right. I mean, I'd have no problem paying him a lot of money, but it's like, is he that he guy has, three years from now? Right. He's come off one of his best seasons in a long time. He's kind of ageless. I'm a little worried I have him too low, uh, that Hmm. he should be even higher on this list. Uh, He'll be turning 31 in August. But I would guess something like a two-year $50 million contract, you know, or it's a three-year contract, but it's really a two-year $50 million contract. Like, I see no reason why he wouldn't get paid. And And the most surprising buzz to me is like the last week or two is that like, Oh, the bucks actually aren't going to pay him. But I, I don't know if I totally believe that it makes no sense to me, but that's, that's what's out there. What, what do you think of OBJ now is like yeah. 80th on this list. I have Gabe Davis quite high. I like me some Gabe Davis, Curtis Samuels, another receiver. I think um, receivers are always fun to talk about. I have Beckham on my uh, subcategory contract year fall stars, uh, at huh. least in terms of your rankings. Uh, he's down at 83 and his agent who's, who deserves a presidential like medal of freedom uh, for what he's gotten Odell Beckham compared to the uh, production over the last five or six years. Um, he, you could point to again, Oh, by the end of the season, he was kind of looking like Odell again. And then you pop the hood and the analytics are pretty good. They've, they said that he's a, uh, you know, a premium number two, maybe wide receiver, uh, but somebody else can pay for him. I, I know for instance, my team was poking around before he went to the Ravens. I hope they don't. Again, I don't want like wrong side of 30 wide receivers that are going to be commanding a big salary when I could find somebody in the draft instead. Uh, so I don't think he will this year. I think he's I gonna think he's going to play on a one year deal again, like one, a one year. I think the rest of his career is just one year for deal. about half the money that he made. But you have an, I'd rather have I think a it's a Davis. good spot. I think, I think Gabe spot. Davis, like you could talk yourself into. There's a lot of untapped potential, a lot of big play potential. Even Darnell Mooney, I would rather have. Our guest on the show, KJ Osborne, I think is kind of a, a fun guy. I'm with you. I'd rather go. I'd rather go young. Um, you have Austin Eckler, by the way, way down. Um, oh, which I noticed is, that. I, like you have him 20 spots lower than Jameis Winston, I believe, um, <laughs> which is wild to me. Uh, and in general, I overrate the backup quarterbacks, or I rank them somewhat I, high. Yes. From what I understand, this is not a great running back draft class. So I would, I, I would. I would say you probably should bump up some of these running backs, but at the same time, it is, I think, telling that coming off last summer where we were all talking about all these running backs getting banged, these stars that aren't getting the contracts they want or deserve, and Eckler tried to get traded. You know, he tried to get a raise. Uh, Josh Jacobs held out. Saquon Barkley held out and got a ridiculous, like that contract is more ridiculous with every day. They gave him this absurd incentive deal, but he got no money out of it. Um, what kind of money they get, where they stack up. Derrick Henry is out there. I'm curious. I love the idea of Derrick Henry going somewhere on else. the right team. Still I like he him. is uh, more he, than he any of those. Goodbye. More than any of those other players. I think Henry in the right setup uh, could be a real dog for a team. I had a thought because the team that's going to look so different on offense, I think will be the Greg Roman Harbaugh chargers. Like what about Derrick mm. Henry behind Justin Herbert? <laughs> that would be fun. And look, Don't I send him to the chargers. We know I don't know. There. I think they're going to be a different type. And of now team. they have Jim Harbaugh. So now things will change. They're the but I mean, what name a coach is going to want to go find a mauling run? No, I love right. it. I love it as a fit. Yeah. I, so I struggled with where to put him in Jacobs. Jacobs was about 20 spots higher a year ago, had a bad year. And that kind of follows his career where three and a half yards per carry. He's like one great. Yeah, it did look much better. The eye test, especially by the end, he's a great receiver. He's a complete back, but I have him and Henry around 30. And that's where to me, a lot of the good value in free agency 
actually comes as these one year deals for veterans. Like you could say what you want about Clowney or even Zadarius Smith last year, who was paid more than Clowney. Certainly it's like those guys were actually bargains compared to paying the like 14, $15 million a year for some young guy and Derek Henry and, and Jacobs to me are like the veteran running back equivalent of that, right. but they're not going to make much money. I think they're nice one year ads and position scarcity and the money is all a factor. So that's why I have guys like Pollard and, and Deandre Swift and JK Dobbins. I have them all ahead of Eckler cause they're younger. I, I think Dobbins Eckler didn't look very good last no, year. No, he didn't. No. I think Dobbins is actually, I like guy. some, I always think teams should pay guys on two year deals coming off injury. Cause Dobbs could be a Dobbins could be like a nice longer term bet. Even if he's coming Not off like injury. seeing his name on this list, it's like this stuff races by. Because it's like he's already going to free right. see that I, 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 the one thing I got to bring up here because you got your QB like you gave us Thought you gave QB. it the positional uh, chart and how you rank these guys obviously Kirk Cousins number one obviously and then I was like where do you go from this because it's not like plug and play star players there's a lot of help at quarterback behind him but you have Jacoby Brissett above Baker Mayfield yeah. That was where I just had to go with my gut. I know I'm gonna. That one is probably gonna get the most such a Greg move pushback of anything. But Nick Brisket some, fills a certain role for Greg. That was that. type of a quarterback. Yeah, a, a like good one. That's a, miles down. a good yeah. one that's overlooked. You know, I what I decided to do, Mark, was kind of split the difference. Be fair to Mayfield. They're they're both in the top. They're right around thirty. So it's not like they're that low in the one hundred one. I was like, if I'm gonna stand up for Jacoby and really believe that he's a Dalton line type of quarterback, just like I see Baker being, which has to me a lot of value. Like, would you rather have that? Or would you rather have Derrick Henry? I would rather have that. I think it's like some teams need that. It raises the floor of your team. So I put them right next to each other. Cause I do think Jake brisket is very similar to where Gino was a couple of years ago, where it's like he could step in and he could have brought your team to the playoffs last year. Dan, he, he could have with who, with the jets, with, with Hackett, maybe no, he would have improved their team a lot. I think that's, I I truly believe that's a level he's playing at. He played it for the Browns. He looked fantastic in that Washington. He's still only 31. He's learned a lot. Like to me, he's in his prime and him and Mayfield kind of occupy a similar space, but ranking them versus like Robert Hunt or, you know, Gabe Davis is kind of impossible. It's kind of hard to figure you, you out could, where to put it like a mid-level quarterback. But that's where I truly believe Jake Brisket belongs, that he's better than a decent amount of quarterback. And you could argue because both of them played in the same offense that Stefanski had more success, you know, ultimately with Jacoby than he did with Baker. Jameis being a, your number five free agent quarterback is hilarious. Uh, Darnold, not, but he's, he's not Darnold being beneath 80. Tyler Huntley is just personal. And I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll I be did the bigger move man. That around. Some of those, <laughs> I'll be the bigger man. Uh, to be fair, uh, Darnold's moved up. Some of those, some of those position ones you're looking at are a little off. He is on my long list of one Oh one, whereas Huntley is not. So Darnold has, <laughs> has overtaken him. That might've been congratulations. That means it's time to take a break. Or is there breaking news? What's happening back there, Funk? Funk oh. really feeling the space right now. Well, uh, well I, th- <laughs> that's, I thought you wanted me to play it every time you mentioned 101, and I'd kind of been... Uh, I love that works. It. I, I, was, it. I was good, actually. Yeah. I think okay. it added mm. some yeah. excitement to and the then, quarterback. And then time. earlier, you were like, you were like, you made the little DJ reverb yeah. effect, so I was yeah. like, I have, I have a close thing to have that. We could take a little break. Listen, <laughs> listen, Funk, explore the space back there. You're doing I great. I appreciate let's, that, guys. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we will finish our conversation on the top you 101. You know one quick thing? Like, people yes. don't realize, we don't take, we we say we're taking a break, and then right. we start talking one second later in real life. Right. You and told we, the audience that like two weeks ago. I know, but it st- remains on my radar as a problematic you, item you, for us. I would think, Mark, you the last <laughs> thing you would want to do is take a break and extend Or call the attention to this. All right, let's keep going. In the office. You're right. Because we could start to take a break if you felt like it was like not authentic. Let's take a go walk. Experience. I just think it seems like, but I mean, you know. Well, that could easily be real add, with the listeners. But easily. during that break, you have to listen to your DiGiorno ad read. <laughs> Scrap all that. We could actually, we could keep you here an extra 15 minutes if we take authentic break. Negative. No. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. And yes, we are. If you're just joining us, uh, this is we're going deep Rosenthal 101, not to be confused with the hands of Sessler 213 is coming uh, on the on the doorstep of free agency next month. Greg, uh, let's get back into it. Let's dive in. So 
Here's so QBs we just talked about. Running backs. There's some really big names there and a draft class that's not uh high on RB talent being told. What is the what's a positional group if you're a if you're a team that needs to plug a position uh where you're very excited because there's a lot of depth? As always, there's a ton of interesting quality safeties. Just teams just don't play safeties. They always feel like they can find them or replace them. But I think the linebacker discussion is probably more interesting because there are a lot of players available that are plug and play, mostly three down linebackers in their primes that are going to start next year. So that it's one of the only positions where you can look at and say, wow, there's a lot of guys that will, I think, get big contracts. Patrick Queen is one of them coming from Baltimore. Frankie Louvu from Carolina who's kind of been a gem, you know, diamond in the rough there, but it's played really well. Jordan Brooks, who was a first round pick, uh, Bobby Wagner's out there, Devin White, a, a couple of the the Chiefs linebackers, Willie Gay, Drew Tranquil, Aziz Al Shair, who I really like for Tennessee. So a lot of linebackers, and it, and it's kind of a question of like, it, it's a position that went really out of favor to the point where like teams almost ignored it. And now I wonder, is it gonna start coming back in? Because we've seen these teams like Baltimore and San Francisco, and and even Kansas City's done a good job with their linebackers, like. If, if you have a three down linebacker, it's such an advantage because no one else does. Mm-hmm. And it's so hard to get these guys up to speed that a lot of, I tend to think these guys like Queen and Luvu and Brooks, they're just coming into their prime. They, they're, they had some major ups and downs the first couple of years because you have to learn coverage. And I, I think they will start getting paid in this market. I'm, I, was, I really struggled with where to put them in this I, list. Frankie Luvu, like, to me, every time you watch the Panthers, he's doing something, and he's, like, the kind of perfect free agent pickup for me because it's like you're not going to have to blow the market to get him, but he's going to be productive week after week. Do you have any concern? Because Patrick Queen, I thought, was underwhelming for big chunks of his time. Then wrote so once, the Ravens. They didn't pick up his fifth-year right. option. But yeah. Smith comes in and completely transformed... Very clean space on the field. So if you go and uh, is that kind of like a classic? He's going to get a ton of money and then he doesn't shine the way you'd very possibly, unless it's Mike McDonald in Seattle giving it to him. Mm. And I would just like trust him. Uh, I don't feel good about that ranking and that feeling because I don't like how these rankings often and teams pay just off the contract year instead of looking at the full four years. You know what I mean? Or Mm. the average year that they have. And he's someone who's definitely like peaking at the right time. And, and I give it up to him because he really did have a good year, but, uh, even if he didn't get to 10 sacks. But Jadavian Clowney uh, is another guy with uh, with Patrick Queen. Yeah, the Mike McDonald effect. Like, he was a perfect scheme, deployed uh, the right way, and, and you saw their games jump up. Would that take place with a different team? It is fun to rank, like, see where Clowney's ranking go. Every year it just gets, like, a little bit lower. Even though he had a great year, he's now 41. He's right next to Levante David. He's the perfect, like, Levante he David. He might set the record. One year... Of one Good year value, deals. yeah, right. Like how I, I'm sure someone's tracking this. Like, who, what player, <laughs> non-special teams, um, has the most one-year contracts? He's got to be up had, to about five now. Yeah, right? Sue had a bunch in a row at the end of his career. I, I think a similar type of player, and uh, that's a. There's a lot of players like that that are like, wow, they could really help you. And but it's just like, just give them one year, and you'll help your team this year. Like a. Wait, one Leonard more linebacker. Floyd. Go ahead. One more linebacker that you didn't mention there. I don't think you did. Was Levante David? Yes. Who's up there in years, but obviously is one of the great linebackers in Bucks history. He could still great cover linebacker, which is so important. Uh, obviously, uh, even with his age, he has all the instincts still. There is a very real world where the Bucks don't have Levante David or Mike Evans on the field in September. Like that. That's pretty wild. They're and finally maybe a new kind of turning again. the page. Uh, into a new era in Bucks football. And Devin White, who, you know, when you think of that, that Super Bowl team, he made the all-pro team back then, and he, mm. he was almost on his way, it felt like, to becoming a superstar. And White, yes. And I, yes. I, I have him ranked really low because he just seems like he drives the coaches there crazy. And I, I think it'll some be... some controversy last yes, year about right. it. last couple yeah. of years, really. Lansing or whatever. And I, I tend to think they will, they will keep Levante David as they did a year ago. He was a free agent a year ago. And that'll say a lot that they're happy to just let uh, Devin White go. The you mentioned Clowney, that is one position where it's like, man, there's a lot of good defensive line, like defensive end, defensive lineman available. If you need like 500 quality snaps out of interior or defensive end, that's 
I think where the sweet spot is in free agency. I love some of these guys, like Andrew Van Ginkle. I every, I really seems, like Van Ginkle. He's Ginkel. great. He'd be a good signing. Like I, you know, like I thought Zadarius Smith was a huge difference maker across from Miles Garrett in Cleveland. And if you go back, if you're the Browns and you don't resign him and you don't find someone to go do that same thing, that defense is completely marred. But you can't. That's the good thing for a team like them. Like you can find someone, whether it's there's a lot of options. him or it's like a Leonard Floyd, Clay Campbell. DJ Wanham was an okay player for Minnesota. Like there, there are players. Your guy. Bryce Huff, I think, is going to be an interesting guy to watch. Right. I struggled with where to put him because all he does is win. When it comes pass, to like pass, pass rush, rush win rate is like godlike. And he, yeah. he, he pops off the screen, too. He just is so explosive. Um, yet, he, you know, he never earned the full trust to get like, you know, 50 snaps a game. I'm not yeah. sure why that is. But I think he's going to make a lot of money. So they didn't because he's young. Based on the playing time, the, the Jets staff um, didn't trust him against the run. So if he is uh, somebody that's limited in that, in that um, respect and, and that doesn't develop, then you're paying for like, like just a, a pure pass rusher and how much, mo- how much money does he get? Like he is a guy I fear uh, because they, they made the mistake. I thought of taking Will McDonald last year when they had so much depth uh, uh, at uh, defensive line. And now they're probably going to let Huff walk because they have this first round pick that they need to develop a team could get a guy that's like an 18 sack guy. And, and if he develops in the other end of the game, he's an all pro. So I think he's a guy like, give me, give me a chance on Huff. If I'm a team out there more than pay big money for chase young, right. who, a little bit, maybe of issues. I think uh, he'll get with paid motor more and the, the health young. issues with the surgery. Like give me a guy with upside. I think West used to talk about that um, with fantasy sports a lot. And I, and probably maybe it holds for this. Like, give me the upside shot of a guy being a real stud rather than kind of paying a premium for a guy that has a much lower floor. And the Jets are not in great cap situation at the moment either. So it's like, wh- how would they value the Huff thing? Right. Uh, Jonathan Grenard is another guy who, who get paid a lot of money off the edge. There, there's a lot of different options there. You, you mentioned Wes. See, the Jacoby Brissett thing, this is where I need Wes. We, for, you asked how long have I been doing it. I did it for a few years before uh-huh. coming here. One year without Wes here. And then, you know, we would have our battles. We would have our two lists. We would bring them together. I still got some of those uh, lists from Wes on, uh, saved on my, you know, uh, laptop and my Google Docs and everything. And uh, he would know I would like Jacoby too much. So then he would purposely right. rank him even lower than right. he wanted to to even it out. And I can't argue with the checks and balances are. I'll know, never forget the James. was founded on that. The James yeah. Winston, Marcus Mariota <laughs> b- battles between. Uh, Wes and yeah, I'm not Ray sure who won that. We both lost in the end. I think I, the listeners lost. Well, according to your rankings, he's one of the top free agents out there. He is 90th or something. I stand <laughs> on the hill, and Ryan Tannehill's there too. That a, a backup quarterback is worth a lot. It's worth maybe more than a replacement level sa- safety. Oh, I agree. Or like a rotational linebacker and I think they're underpaid. So that's, I rank them that way that to me, they're more important. I, I struggled with where to put Minshew, where to put Josh Dobbs. There's Minshew actually is low and she's a little low. I don't, he's just reliable. I mean, right. like he's, he's one a guy's a knucklehead starter. and a career loser. And one guy stepped oh. in and did a nice job last year. Why? Well, how could they be so different? They're What's not different. They're right next to each other on the but, list. But why is the guy that really stepped in and did well last year behind the guy that went into victory formation and called a <laughs> touchdown run. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> knocking him for Respectfully. the touchdown run. Uh, Minshew, I think if you peek behind the, he actually finished the season playing well, but I don't think he was playing that well most of the season. He was fine. He was season. okay. Jameis okay. has been a productive player, is still relatively young. I think he's more talented. They're, they're close though. But if you need a backup though, there's a million flavors. Jameis, Dobbs was out there who's probably going to end up on the 101 once uh, the tags happen because he's right outside. Tyrod actually played pretty well. Darnold's out there. Mason Rudolph's out there. Drew Locke's out there. There's like kind of yeah, a that's million pretty of, grim. Some of those, of those is Tannehill too good to be a backup. I mean, does he take a starter's job away if there's issues? I mean, I kind of like Tan. Maybe I over, I think he's like the really Baker like of this year where he's going to sign somewhere where he has a chance. I, I yeah. would have had him wait. I did a, a list earlier in August, like before the season. And he was so much higher. So was one of his old teammates, Christian Fulton, who was in my top 20. And his play this year spooked me a little bit. That like, mm. oh yeah, this guy is older. 36 years old. And he gets sacked he had a us lot. moments. Well, but, but behind a terrible offensive line with a lack of skilled positions. A- him too, absolutely. But, but I, I just started to think, okay, maybe he's reaching that Matt Ryan 
part of the career. Not everyone's going to be Aaron Rodgers and you know before this year and playing so great at 37 30 I'd still if I were you know? Pittsburgh and I know that they're they've got their whatever they're doing over there but like uh you just pick up Tannehill pairing with Arthur Smith and there you go right why not I mean do more do well do do more also but I'm saying do, do, the, the do nothing route is like there's a, a ton of locked in the closet here. by the way a lot of listeners reached out about the summer what is a summer in a day uh the Ray Bradbury mm. Uh, tale about the poor girl locked in the closet, and now all Pittsburgh fans locked in that closet, wanting to be let out to see the sunshine. <laughs> you really That's connected l- with the with the listeners. They really I have to did. Admit, I have yeah. to think about the entire story again to even understand why this applies to the Steelers. But because I'll she it out. used to be on Earth and she saw the sun regularly. That okay, was like the right. peak, peak yes. Big Ben. Yeah, she knew what it looked like to see an uh, exciting offense in Pittsburgh. And now she's in this other world, planet. Who are the other girls locking the Steelers in the closet? Though? Uh, the GM, okay, Omlin. Right. Okay, the Steelers the, themselves. Yes. The girls, the Steelers, the fan decision makers, or the football viewer. Yeah. <laughs> what? What, Randy? Sorry, I'm sorry. That was an accident. Right. No, don't <laughs> tell us that. I just liked it. It was good. It was a yeah, good combo. So, so <laughs> let let us. Uh, you know, Mason Rudolph probably is holding that door closed. And yeah, sure. I'm sure he has a role in it. Venus is closer to the sun. That's all. I, I don't get the. I can't. See I'll the take sun it up with it. the uh, the estate of Ray Bradbury. He passed away in 2000. I mean, he had a firm grasp on science fiction, so I'm not gonna go nuts with it. But what one of the things <laughs> you notice doing this exercise? What teams pop up a lot early in this list? And for such a terrible roster, I was like, man, a lot of the Patriots' best players are free agents now. Like, they are in a tough spot. Kyle Duggar is a top 25 player on this list. There's some dis- – I'm a little lower in him than, than some others, but I still like him. He's a big playmaker. Uh, when you is one of the best uh, offensive linemen on the list. Trent Brown is one of the best offensive linemen on this. Hunter Henry is my number two tight end on this list but behind – Dalton Schultz. It's like, this is a bad roster that's about to get worse. You could see every one of those players going somewhere else. What we need I to kind of do think they all were. Maybe Duggar. I don't even know. We need to come up with like a, a list of overly familiar free agency 101 names. It would have like Hunter Henry, yeah. Curtis Samuel. Mm-hmm. I like Davian Curtis Clowney. Samuel. I'm not saying they're bad players, yeah. but I feel like we're always talking about these guys. This Leonard Williams has now uh, become a somewhat regular I do wonder with New England because they got the second most cap room in the league. Like, new leadership. What do you do there? Like, are you going to attack money. the market? I hope you need to. I have a feeling Robert Kraft has has this uh, storyline in his head in New England that he doesn't spend money. I'm sorry, is this the rainfall sound effect? <laughs> yeah. He talked about not seeing the sun, so I was looking for rain. I don't like that we have to make <laughs> like him five minutes ago. every time. <laughs> I like it, though. I just like having random sounds beneath this. <laughs> I Thank just, you. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're doing great, Funk. Anything else? I, w- I want to say the 101, number 101. Oh, yeah. Oh, I did want to talk about yeah. this. I really debated it. I love I it. Was thinking of I like it, it this year. This is not a final list either, so you guys can have some influence if you want. Uh, Michael Thomas is the choice yep. right now. I mean, this is the guy that, uh, does he hold the all-time single-season catch record still? Feels like four years, 4,000 years. It ago. feels that way. I think it was 2019. He was the offensive player of the year. A lot of injuries. Finally stayed somewhat healthy last year and is no longer the guy. But as a one, oh, as a 101? A little bit of a like locker room. Uh, Menace? <laughs> yeah. I mean, more than a little bit. Caused some issues, I believe. Well, nothing for, too serious. Uh, he has spent a, a decent amount of this offseason. I've, I've held back on bringing it up on the show. Uh, burying Derek Carr again, like it's happened more. Uh, that was uh, now a month ago, but uh, he made it very clear to the point Derek Carr like had to respond while like doing some sponsor obligation what in New, locker room. New Orleans and just said, I, I want the best for Mike. I don't know, you know, why he's doing this more or less. So whoever, whoever gets why Michael Thomas, it? you better hope that he likes your quarterback. But he's like, for instance, I know this isn't how you do the one on one because there's a little like with Twitter and the lack of punctuation, mm. little winking nod to the whole thing. Yes. Uh, you need to find someone Andrews in Pete, that ball bur- Tyre ballpark. Tyre Tart, uh, that that wouldn't move the needle necessarily. Look, it should have been Jameis. Okay, so I thought about Minshew. Mm. I thought about, but I wanted Minshew a little higher on the list. He's gotten Jameis would have been. Wasn't much Gino one hundred one one year? Gino was one hundred one, which in hindsight, way too low, way too low. How mad were you that you couldn't it, put Teddy Bridgewater on this list this year? How mad did it? Be? <laughs> Um, it was sad, but he's helping the youth of America. I thought Josh Dobbs would be a fun one-on-one, but I tend to do that, that where it's always some like 
uh, out of left, you know, kind of left right, field left quarterback. And I thought Michael Thomas was a nice change of pace. Right, a nice we can't big have game. Austin Eckler at ninety two. I understand why. That's so low. That's he's almost off the list, Greg. Well, he won't be seen. I, all right. I did not check this out of curiosity. I'm going to check one of your competitors. I won't. I won't say what it is. That seems. I feel like Wes would but push back on that. Ninety two. What is, what is Eckler giving you right now? That he's a, a that Devin Singletary rate. isn't. Who's not on the list? For he's instance. maybe the best pass catching running back in the league outside of McCaffrey. And I know he didn't look great last year, but maybe he was beat up. I mean, ninety two. I have a, I have a list from a, a metric site that we mentioned previously. Uh, he's at fifty six. Okay. On their list. I live with that. I could live with 56. Okay. Like where but do you have his comp is Dion Lewis. Where is, where's uh, Josh Jacobs on your list? He's like in that 32 or something. He had averaged three and a half yards of carry last year. Got more juice moves better. He but did he get made, better after McDaniels left. And then he got hurt again. Eckler's had a lot of wear and tear on a relatively small body. And just I'm gonna tell Matt Harmon about this. I'm using my, I'm telling Harmon. There you go. Right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I do a show together. To it's some of those plays that you called out, Dan, yes. during the season. He had the piano on his back. I the get lack that. of explosiveness with a running back. I found you hey, don't want to chase him. He had a re- damn piano on his back. You got to take that <laughs> well, into account. At, at, with running backs, you don't want to chase the rebound at age 29. I think it's sensible safe, contract. It's safer to just be like, okay. That I wouldn't mind him in like back. a committee situation. Two years with a club option, and maybe he was dealing with things, and he comes back re- rejuvenated. I just think that's almost off the one hundred and one. Seems extreme. I'll move him up a, a little. He had bit like literally you. like forty touchdowns the previous two years. Didn't have any season career uh, derailing injury. All right, I might move him up at six spots. Just do me ahead this of favor. Packers <laughs> guard John Runyon and Jet safety. <laughs> Jordan Whitehead. It is really annoying. Ranking Whitehead has a nose for the football. These so guards. Maybe yeah, got to well. keep him behind Whitehead. <laughs> ranking these guards because <laughs> like finding out who likes what guards or what the league like and just like pretending I really have a hot take a on tough one, yeah. John Simpson, uh, who's in my top 50, and Lloyd Cushenberry, who's a nice young center, but it's like... Um, you guys are fine with one one. You're fine with Michael Thomas, I guess, because he's yes, no, I think yeah, that's a good one. It's actually kind of hurting his value because in the end, with with players getting taken off and added, like it'll be like the he should be like. 80. If you want my real take, up eighty. I would put him in the eighties and put Jameis at one on one, but we're not going to fight that battle. I, I, Jameis isn't a fun one on one. Michael Thomas is is fun. Okay, you know what I did this year. Yes. I made sure to check that free agent kicker list and have respect. Oh, very nice for the position, and I realized. Uh, quite an underrated kicker is worthy. He's in my top 90, Kaimi Fairbairn. So oh, shout out to oh, yeah, he belongs Kaimi Fairbairn. Maybe he should be even higher. Where like, do you have him? Uh, he's like in the top 90. What about Lutz? Eh, I mean, Whoa. He just got cut a year ago. If you've been annoying with as a kicker within a year, then I <laughs> you don't make the top 100. But Kaimi Fairbairn has been awesome the last two years. I feel like Greg, uh, he deserves it. Greg the Leg Zerline was a monster this past year. I didn't realize he's in free agency. He's a free agency. <laughs> Shoot, we got to lock him up. Keep we got to tag his ass. Yeah, they probably will yeah. give K- Fairbairn a nice little deal. Big Bone Randy's out there. Dicker the Kicker? He is not. A lot of guys. He would have been. I honestly would have put Dicker the Kicker in the top 50 or something, but he's one of those fake exclusive rights. Oh, yeah, 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 where he yeah, has yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. No actual bargaining. Bargain. All right. Anything else, Greg? I think you did an excellent job. Thank you. Uh, minor quibbles overall. Uh, certainly, it, it's going to seem incomplete when compared to the free agency 213. But sure. honestly, uh, the, that's just that's not even your fault. That's more our our ambition towering over all rivals. And we yes. and, you know, according to our plan, we need to probably get to work in the next hour or two on that. Oh, send the bots. So I don't know what you send yeah, the bots because, to work. Uh, right. You know, scheduling note, we're not scheduled to be back till Tuesday. There'll be NFL Combine. We'll be talking about all those uh, press conferences. But you guys have a long weekend in front of you of just uh, in the lab, watching tape, working it's a couple, on It's rankings. a couple drop downs and then an enter click. Yes. And then we, we go get a couple beers and we come back and most of the work's done. AI. Quite frankly. Beautiful. Yeah. That's how it works, I think. Well, it's going to work fine. Does it comb? Does it literally comb through the internet and grab bits and pieces of everyone else's? I mean, it blurbs? will probably grab some of Greg's. So that's what we're going to have to be careful of. Well, we'll replace some of the more obvious bits of plagiarism with a little Sessler flair. I love it. I would like, uh, thank you, Randy. Plan. I would like to see an AI bot try to generate an average Mark Sessler uh, 
post. But that's like I said, we're it's not been doing happening that for years. Okay. We're going to supplement right. the AI with some Sesslerisms. Okay. Really just to sneak it past, you know, editorial too. Right. A couple key words and they believe that we've done all the work. And I come in with a happy Gilmore reference. Sure. Every well, like while. Dan, Dan's back to his old tricks. We're done. It's like, Hey, what about uh, live? Like uh, they really bang themselves <laughs> by calling themselves live before the internet. I, you know, I make a couple like Logan Roy references here and there. Send. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Glory is ours. All right, Randy, you did a nice job. Who's the Kendall Roy of the free agency list? Mm. Mm, that's a good one to think about. All right, Randy, get back to us in exactly one week. Thank you for filling in. My pleasure. Well, all right, till Monday? Till Tuesday. 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 Heed the call. <laughs>